Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh, as you noticed, I kind of changed the background uh, of the slide up a little bit, so hopefully this will prevent all the slides from cycling through like my first presentation did. Uh, but we're still talking about the early modern era, particularly talking about uh, Renaissance painters today. Uh, I emailed you in my last email uh, an attachment of some Renaissance painters and paintings, and I put that on Moodle as well. So why don't you go ahead and get that out? and uh, use that to kind of follow along as we kind of go through these uh, important uh, painters from the Renaissance era. And uh, what I really want to do here is kind of look at each individual painting. Uh, most importantly, I want you to know who painted it, what the name of the painting is, and what the painting is kind of talking about or representing. This obviously can be interpreted however you want to interpret it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of talk about each one a little bit as we go through them. Uh, but if you don't understand it or understand what it represents, uh, you know, feel free to look it up uh, on the Internet or, you know, some source like that. So um, anyway, so this is where we left off last time. We talked a little bit about humanism. We'll get into that more later. Uh, humanism from this uh, from this era, um, which was a big part of the Renaissance uh, and kind of the important uh, painters from this period. You know, we're talking about uh, da Vinci and Michelangelo, and those are probably the names you're familiar with. Uh, other ones here, probably not as much, but uh, that's okay. We'll talk about each one a little bit individually uh, as we go through the paintings. And then we also talked about them a little bit when we were um, uh, on my last uh, post to you guys. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, you know, kind of start taking a look at some of these people's famous works. All right, so you, you got your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course, all named after famous painters, uh, probably the least of which is, is uh, Donatello back here. Uh, but Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo were all very famous painters. Uh, Donatello is pretty well known, too. But anyway, um, so the first one I want to look at is a one of the most famous paintings by Leonardo da Vinci, which is called The Last Supper. Uh, obviously, it's a depiction of... Um, Jesus at the Last Supper uh, on Holy Thursday uh, before uh, being betrayed by Judas Iscariot uh, um, and uh, taken and uh, crucified on the cross. So you're going to notice in a lot of Renaissance painting, there's a lot of religious symbolism there. Um, you know, most of the paintings from uh, most of the paintings from you know, these, these eras do have some religious significance, uh, but they are different than paintings we've looked at before. We've only looked at a couple, uh, but you'll notice those paintings, like the one of Justinian, uh, is all about him, is all about the emperor. And most paintings that you'll find in periods uh, before the Renaissance are paintings of famous people or sketchings or something like that, or obviously during Roman times, they do statues or busts of famous people. Uh, so we start to see paintings here celebrate, you know, lots of people. And that's one of the big themes that you're going to see in all the stuff that we look at, right? Um, paintings that celebrate big groups of people because the Renaissance is all about celebrating the individual and the importance of the individual. So here's an example of one where there's a lot of people. The reason the background is so grainy there is because this is actually painted on a church in Italy, uh, kind of on a stone wall in a church. So... Um, they've restored it as best they could, but, you know, they don't want to ruin any of the original painting. So that's why it appears to be very, very grainy. All right, so let's move on to the next one. This is another one by Leonardo da Vinci, probably his most famous work, uh, The Mona Lisa. Um, lots of stories of, uh, about uh, Mona Lisa. Some people uh, have said that, you know, it's, it's a person that's being painted by da Vinci, uh, others have said that, uh, you know, it's it's a rendering somewhat of what he would have looked like as a woman. Uh, there's lots of different things uh, about the Mona Lisa, but it's maybe the most famous painting in the world. Why is that? Okay. Well, 
for one, it speaks to the idea of the time, uh, the the Renaissance idea of the individual and the importance of the individual. This is just a, a person, not necessarily somebody of any particular prominence, um, but yet she's become the most famous painting, uh, maybe the most famous painting ever made. So that really speaks to the the um, Renaissance ideology of people being important, um, as we're going to see in a lot of these. Again, celebrating the individual and, and the importance of what, um, you know, every person can bring. That's that's the whole idea of humanism and humanities. Everybody's important, not just the people that are wealthy, powerful, etc. Celebrating the individual. This also stands out because of its kind of three-dimensional-ish effects of the painting. She actually looks a little bit bigger in here because I stretched the painting than what she actually is, but um, you can see like the, the background uh, with the, the, the water and some trees and things like that, and the very realistic features um, of the Mona Lisa make this a really, really famous painting. And also, no matter where you're looking at it from, it looks like she's looking right at you. So that's kind of an interesting feature of the painting. All right, moving on. All right, this next one is not a painting. It's a sculpture uh, of the Paeta um, by Michelangelo. Uh, and obviously, this is a, a sculpture of Mary um, holding the dead body of Christ after uh, his, he was taken down from the cross during the after the crucifixion. Um, you can find this uh, to that at the Vatican. Um, this and a sculpture called David are probably are Michelangelo's two most famous sculptures. Uh, but again, it really, you know, again, we're, we're talking about another painting of, or another, I'm sorry, another sculpture or another artwork of religious significance uh, in one way that it stands out. Um, and also just in the detail of it, and in the robes and the clothing of Mary, as well as the body of, uh, of Christ uh, laying there um, after having died. Uh, it's very vivid in its imagery, even though it's not a painting at all, and what makes it one of the most famous sculptures ever, uh, excuse me, ever. It's got that religious symbolism to it, um, you know, which we're also going to see on the next one. But again, Paeta by Michelangelo. There's another more famous work by Michelangelo uh, in the Sistine Chapel. At the, again, also at the Vatican, Michelangelo was commi uh, commissioned to paint the ceilings and, and the chapel in the Vatican. Uh, the, Vatic uh, the Vatican, uh, and again, it's another story um, with religious significance. You have God who is reaching out to presumably Adam there uh, during the creation story. Um, again, another painting that shows lots of people, right? Um, very vivid imagery uh, on the painting um, and religious symbolism as well. So uh, you kind of hit all those themes again a little bit with, uh, with this particular one. All right, the next one. Okay, so this one is by the German painter and mathematician Albrecht Dürer. Okay, that's this guy. This is worse than writing on the board. Anyway, um, again, another painting of religious significance. Uh, Adoration of the Magi is, of course, when the, the wise men come to uh, adore the and see the, the baby Jesus for the first time. Um, this is another painting of religious significance, but you also see, uh, you know, multiple people. In it, you got the three wise men here, you know, men uh, and of different, uh, you know, ethnic backgrounds, as you can tell as well. And again, lots of vivid, vivid imagery and color. Obviously, the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus are there. Um, but then you look at the sky, you look at the sky and you see, you know, it's very blue with the clouds and everything. So it is that very realistic uh, point of view to it, which makes it again, um, pretty substantial, fairly significant painting for its time or any time. All right, here's another example um, of a painting of Mary. It's another rendition of the Virgin Mary with, uh, um, you know, with a, a young infant uh, Jesus and another boy. 
so again, it's another rendition of Christ, uh, another another rendition of religious significance in Christ. This is a painting by Raphael. Uh, we'll look at three from Raphael. This is the first one. Um, but again, these are paintings. They're on a canvas, uh, but they do have a lot of three-dimensional features. Again, you see the sky in the background there. Um, you see, uh, you know, lots of color with it, with the clothing uh, on, on Mary there. Um, and, uh, you know, even in the background, lots of detail are put into uh, a painting like this. So this is, again, um, by Raphael and uh, kind of, again, represents the focus on the individual and, and, and the human aspect of things, right? Um, this next one is also by Raphael, uh, and this is probably my favorite. Uh, this is called School of Athens, um, and it's it's a painting celebrating, um, you know, Athenian practices or, or the time of ancient Greece. One of the big features of the Renaissance era where they really tried to go back to the teachings and, and re-establish or look at a lot of the teachings that had gone on during the age of, of ancient Greece that had been kind of lost during the Middle Ages. But if you look at this painting for a minute, uh, you see a lot of different things. For one, look at all the detail that's put into it here, like uh, you, you know all the the frescoes and the the um, the the details underneath the archway. Even up here, you see the same thing. Uh, you know, kind of through the window, there's the sky and and all that. Uh, and what really speaks to you know down here, you get a little bit of that too, right? But what really speaks to me about this painting is all the effort in terms of uh, all the people that are put in there. And if you look closely, you have people that, uh, you know, can be interpreted as maybe some of the mythological gods of, of Greek mythology. Um, you know, here it kind of looks like like a Neptune-like figure, or I'm sorry, Poseidon-like figure, uh, or Zeus, uh, or important, you know, here's another one, or important people from Greek mythology, uh, but portrayed in a very human form, okay? Again, folks, this speaks to the focus and the importance on the individual during the Renaissance, how every individual is important. And in here, you just have all these people kind of gathering, talking, discussing, relaxing, doing all sorts of different things, um, which make it, again, uh, really stand out as a very detailed painting. It's got lots of color. you got orange, and blue, and green, and kind of tan colors there and, um, you know, kind of the, just the vividness um, of the images in this painting is what really make it stand out. Again, the School of Athens by Raphael. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, here's another one I think is really cool in its detail, okay? Uh, this is by Jan, Jan van Eyck, uh, who was a Dutch master, a Dutch painter from uh, the 15th century. 15th and 16th century. Um, what I like about this painting too is the detail. You know, specifically if you look at the um, mirror there in the back and the chandelier, you know, they look very, very real. Even the window, this almost looks like a picture or a photograph, more so than a painting. And if you look close enough at the painting or at the uh, the mirror in the back, there you actually see that they paint that Van Eyck painted in the back sides of the. Uh, the two people, they're presumably getting married, right? Um, now, this can be interpreted in, in a lot of different ways. The, the, now, it wasn't uncommon for women to wear these very large, um, frilly uh, outfits with, with lots of layers to them, but you could also presume by the fact that the woman is kind of holding herself over her stomach there a little bit, is that she might actually be pregnant. So the concept of the wedding here um, is something that would be really controversial for its time, right? You're also seeing them, uh, you know, in a, you know, in a bedroom, so that could be suggestive of something or other. But I love the detail in this painting so much, so it almost really looks like it's a, like it's a photograph more so than, um, more so than a painting. And again, it's got a lot of color with the green and the blue and the white and the black there. Um, and then you know some kind of more copperish colors here, and the red for the uh, for the bed and and the um, the drawers back there. Uh, so 
again, this is again another prominent uh, painting. This is again by Jan van Eyck, who was a Dutch master. Okay, so this one is another one by Durer, Albrecht Durer. Uh, he's the one who did the Adoration of the Magi. This one's simply called a young hair. This one's similar to the wedding in that it is a, a painting uh, that looks very realistic. Again, almost a photograph of a, of a rabbit or a hare rather than simply being a painting. It's got that three-dimensional kind of imaging to it. Um, and, uh, you know, another example of the ability of these painters of this era to make things that really stand out, um, you know, through vanishing point and points of reference within uh, a painting to, to make them as realistic as possible, which nobody had been able to do before. Again, if you reference the paintings we looked at before, Again, particularly the one of Justinian, when we're looking at Rome, it's very flat and there's not much realism to it. But we've seen in paintings like this how far uh, these painters have come in their skills and abilities. So just a few more to look at here and then we'll be done. Um, this one's pretty self-explanatory, uh, the painting of the, of the crucifixion of Christ. We've got um, Jesus, uh, the Virgin Mary there, presumably Mary Magdalene and, and a couple other uh, women as well as um, one of the one of the apostles here, presumably maybe Peter or Andrew or maybe even Joseph of Arimathea, but whatever. Um, every significant Renaissance painter did their own version of the crucifixion. This is one of the mo more famous ones. It was almost like a rite of passage uh, for painters during this era to paint their own rendition of the crucifixion of of, of Christ. Uh, that again speaks to the importance of religion in people's lives during that time. It still is very significant and relevant. So much of life and culture is centered around the church here. Now, remember, we're at a time during the, you know, 1400s, 1500s, where, you know, you don't have some of the things that we're used to today for cultural significance. You know, you don't have television, radio. Um, really even music to, to that much of a degree. So people draw a lot of their cultural significance and things from the painting of the, the paint and the art of the era. Uh, and, you know, here is an example of the crucifixion of yet another painting um, that, uh, you know, depicts what, what really mattered to people during that time. And during that time, of course, religion still dominates people's lives very, very much. But again, vivid imagery of people in this one. Obviously, the, the crucified Jesus, uh, as well as the sky is turning black um, up there with some 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 angels and, and deities flying, um, you know, make for, again, to this be a, a very vivid and significant rendition of the crucifixion, which was done by just about every painter. Again, this is uh, Raphael's version of the crucifixion. All right, so just a couple more here, and then we're done. Uh, this is another significant one by the painter Sandro Botticelli, B-O-T-T-I-C-E-L-L-I. -L -L -I. Um, what's, what's neat about this one is, is kind of the, the more, the, the aquatic sense of it is the birth of Venus or the birth of, of, woman, of, of the woman from the shell. It invokes the ideas of... Um, the uh, uh, of mythology again of, of Greek mythology or, or Roman mythology with Venus being a Roman goddess of love. Um, again, imagery of people here or other gods. You get this lots of you get the forest in there and the trees and all that stuff. Um, and then you get the water and the skies in the background. Again, this is very detailed. Um, another very detailed painting and noted for being one of the first paintings to show the um, the more or less the, the nude figure of, of a female. So it stands out in that, uh, in that respect as well. This is The Birth of Venus by Sandro Botticelli. All right, last one. Um, again, this is uh, by um, Giovanni Bellini. Feast of the Gods by Giovanni Bellini. I'm uh, not going to go into too much detail on this one. It's, it's, we've kind of gone for a while here, so you're probably very, very bored. Uh, but, you know, again, this one talks, uh, shows a lot of 
um, people, you know, gathering together uh, out in the woods and, and the imagery of that. Uh, you know, you got the hillside and and uh, trees and everything. And again, this is a painting with lots of color to it, lots of blues and yellows and reds and a little bit of pink there, different sh uh, shades of, of red, some browns and, and greens uh, and stuff like that as well. So, uh, and it's, again, a painting meant to really celebrate the individual, celebrate people. So I hope what you've seen here through all the stuff we've looked at this Renaissance painting and Renaissance work really serves to celebrate the importance of the individual. Uh, and that's what the Renaissance was all about. When we talked about individualism or humanism, uh, we're really talking about the celebration of humanity and celebrating people, not just special people, but important, or not, I'm sorry, not just important or special people like kings and generals and things like that, but anybody. Right. Anybody's important. So uh, I'm going to cut things off there and I'll post something else for you guys tomorrow. Hey, have a good night and talk to you soon.